Lucas Hurwitz here with Wheatstone. Wheatstone's WheatNet IP driver software makes using sound cards in your automation and other network computers a thing of the past. We want your driver installation and setup to be simple and effortless, so we've produced this video to demonstrate the right way to go about it. Let's walk you through it step by step. First, we'll need to disable the Windows firewall so it doesn't interfere with WheatNet IP connections. To do this, start at the control panel and open the Windows firewall settings. Click Advanced Settings at the left side of the window. On the following page, select Windows Firewall Properties near the bottom of the box labeled Overview. On each of the several tabs of this dialog, make sure the firewall state is off and that all connections inbound and outbound are set to Allow. It will be necessary to reboot the computer to put these changes into effect. Now we're ready to install the WheatNet IP driver software. Insert the CD or double-click the downloaded installer. The first thing you'll see is a license agreement. Read it and hopefully you'll click I agree. The next dialog will ask you to choose the components you wish to install. The defaults are fine for now, so we'll just click Next. Now you'll be prompted for a location for the software. Again, the default is usually fine, so click Install. The installer will go to work and a progress bar will let you know how things are going. At some point, you may be prompted about installing Keylock USB drivers. If you're planning on using a hardware key dongle, you should allow this by clicking Install at this point. If, however, you're planning to use a software key, simply click Don't Install. The steps for obtaining a software key are covered a little bit later. Toward the end of the installation process, you'll be asked some questions to help you configure the driver for your WheatNet IP system. First, you'll be asked to identify the network interface in your machine that will be used for WheatNet IP. Just choose it from the pull-down list. Now you'll need to give the driver a Blade ID. This is simply a number that should be unique within your system and should not be the same number of any other blade. Choose and enter the ID. You'll be asked how many channels or stereo signals to and from the network this driver should support. If you've bought a license, that determines how many channels you're authorized for. If you installed the key lock drivers and are using a hardware key, here's where you insert your USB license dongle. After Windows takes a moment to recognize it, you should see a message indicating that your driver is licensed and the number of channels it supports. If you didn't install the key lock drivers in an earlier step, the installer will now notice that a license wasn't found. If you're going to use a software key, you'll need to obtain the key file from Wheatstone. From the desktop, click the Start button, then All Programs. Click the Wheatstone folder, then WheatNet IP. Choose Configure WheatNet IP Driver, then click the Request button near the top of the next window. You'll be presented with three options. Select Obtain License Key. Copy the code you're given in this step and paste it into an email to techsupport at wheatstone.com requesting a license key and mentioning how many channels the license should support. This will be indicated in the window's upper right. Then you can close this window. Our engineers will email a file to you which contains the software key. When you receive it, click Enter a license key, drag the file to the space provided, and click OK. This will activate your license. You can now close out of this dialog and any others that are open, and click the Close button at the completed installer window. If you're using a USB license dongle, we need to make sure Windows doesn't turn off the power to the dongle since that would cause a problem. We'll use the System Properties window in the control panel to do that. Open the control panel and click the Device Manager button. Then click the plus sign next to Universal Serial Bus Controllers. You'll get a list of one or more USB Root Hub items. Right-click each of these and select Properties. Then click the Power Management tab. Uncheck the checkbox beside Allow the computer to turn off this device to save power. Then click OK and continue out of the dialog. You'll need to change the power management settings for each and every USB hub. Once this is done, you may also need to reboot the computer to make this change effective. Next, we'll make sure Windows doesn't let our network interface card go into standby either. From Device Manager, as in the previous step, find Network Adapters and click the plus sign to expand it. Right-click the adapter that'll be connected to your WheatNet IP network and select Properties. 
Select the Power Management tab and again, uncheck the Allow Computer to Turn Off This Device to Save Power checkbox and click OK. You may need to reboot to make this change effective as well. One final step that may be required on some, but not all, computers. The driver program needs to run as administrator before it'll pass audio. To check on this, go to the root directory of your computer and navigate to Programs. If you're running a 32-bit machine, open the Programs folder. If you have a 64-bit machine, then the folder you want is Programs x86. Then open Wheatstone, Wheatnet IP, Driver, and right-click on the e2winctl.exe application. Go to Properties, Compatibility, and make sure the box Run as Administrator is checked. Click Apply, then OK. You can now close any open windows. This completes the installation of your Wheatnet IP driver software. The driver is now ready to act as a software blade on your Wheatnet IP network. And you can now use the Wheatnet IP Navigator software to configure and name sources and destinations, set up the logic ports, perform audio routing, and more. You can find even more detailed information on our website. A great place to start would be at our knowledge base, located at knowledge.wheatstone.com.